Hi hey everyone, today we are about to discuss the supply to the abdomen and the hind limb. Okay, so it is very concise way. It is in very concise way. So first of all, the posterior aorta or the abdominal aorta passes backward from the heart and causes the hiatus aorticus and then it will cause the hiatus aorticus means it will be crossing the thoracic region it will be causing the crossing the thoracic region and coming into the abdomen region okay so when it will cross the hiatus aorticus it will continue as the abdominal artery okay now when it will come to the abdomen it will get several branches so the very first branch is the your phrenic artery so the phrenic artery is to supply the diaphragm okay it is as simple now the next is the you can see it. this is the celiac artery celiac artery so this celiac artery will further give branches okay celiac artery is its main aim is to supply various organs that are present in the abdominal cavity so the very first branch we can clearly see here that it is going and just crossing the dorsal surface of the human and supplying the spleen. So this is the splenic artery. Okay. So the splenic artery just cross the dorsal surface of the human and just supply the spleen. Now coming on to the next arteries, which is right and the left ruminal artery. So these are right and the left ruminal artery. So talking about firstly that about the right ruminal artery. So the right ruminal artery will run in the right longitudinal groove and cross or cross or transverse the caudal transverse groove and anastomose with the left ruminal artery over here okay similarly the right uh, the left ruminal artery will move cranially and transverse the cranial transverse groove and just run in the left longitudinal groove and runs caudally to anastomose with the your right ruminal artery so this was all about the ruminal arteries now the next is the hepatic artery the hepatic artery will obviously supply the liver so there are two hepatic arteries the right and the left and from that only there are there are several other arteries like cystic artery and the pancreatic artery so this was all about the anterior portion now there are two arteries which will supply the kidney the left renal artery and the right renal artery together they are known as renal arteries okay now the next is the cranial mesentery cranial mesentery it will supply the intestine primarily okay so the cranial mesentery will supply the colic colic ka middle region ko supply karegi jejunal artery degi ileus colic artery degi collateral artery degi or pancreatic artery degi. so these all five arteries is given by the cranial mesentery part now coming on to the caudal mesentery caudal mesentery will supply to the colon and the rectum now next is the testicular and the ovarian artery in males it it will supply to the tunica vaginalis vas deferens epididymis and the testis and in the case of the female it will supply to the ovary fallopian tube okay so these was all about the testicular and the ovarian artery okay now coming on to the lumbar artery actually the lumbar artery are six in pair okay but the from the abdominal aorta it will only give five pair of lumbar artery and rest is given by the internal area okay the sixth pair is given by the internal area artery now these five pair will supply to the abdomen wall the lateral wall or the dorsal wall of the abdomen is supplied by these lumbar arteries okay now at the level of fifth to sixth lumbar vertebrae okay they will separate out okay and give primarily talking about the three main is the median sacral external iliac and internal iliac okay these are the primary uh, arteries that will be given out okay now first of all let me talk about the external iliac and internal iliac and the median sacral so the external iliac are two in number and the internal iliac are also two in number the internal iliac will supply the organs that are present in the pelvic region okay while the external iliac will supply to the hind limb okay the median sacral artery will run caudally into the tail and supply the various muscles that are present in the tail okay now come on, coming on to the discussing the about the internal iliac so the internal iliac artery you can see the part so this is the internal iliac it will run here okay now the very first branch we have to discuss is the umbilical artery 
okay so this umbilical artery obviously it is in the fetal stage only it gets out the uterine artery which will supply the horns and the uterus and vast difference in the case of the male second is the ureteric artery which will supply the ureter third is the vesicular branch which will be supplying the cranial part of the bladder next is the iliomuscular artery which will supply the iliacus muscle and the sos major muscle okay now the next is the cranial gluteal arteries these gluteal arteries will pass down the greater ischiatic foramen okay and supply the organs or the muscles so the cranial gluteal artery will supply the muscle of the hip okay next is the urogenital artery obviously as the name indicates it will supply the genital organs of the animal in the male it will supply to the bladder vas deferens seminal vesicles pelvic part of the urethra while in the case of the female it will supply to the vestibule urethra and the uterus next is the obturator artery obviously as the name indicates the supply will be the same it will supply to the obturator internus and the externus coming on to discuss about the caudal gluteal so the caudal gluteal artery it will supply to the biceps femoris and the middle gluteus muscle now next is the internal pudendal artery so the internal pudendal artery in the case of the males it will supply to the bulb of the penis corpus cavernosum and the glands in female it will supply to the vagina vestibule vulva and the clitoris okay this was about this and it will also supply to the some muscles of the perineum rectum and the obturator externus this was all about the internal iliac artery that we have to discuss now coming on to the external and iliac artery so the external iliac artery it will supply to the hind leg so the very first branch that the external iliac artery will give is the deep circumflex artery this deep circumflex artery will supply to the tensor fasciae lata and the cranial part of the quadriceps femoris muscle okay now the next that we have to discuss is the deep femoral artery deep femoral artery will further branch out into the medial circumflex artery and the pudendo epigastric artery the medial circumflex artery will supply to the muscles of the thigh while the pudendo epigastric will further divide into the posterior abdominal artery and the external pudenda the posterior abdominal artery will continue and anastomose with the anterior abdominal artery at some point while the external pudendal artery will supply to the mammary gland in the case of the female while in the case of the male it will supply to the male prepuce okay means the external covering of the glands okay now coming on to the lateral circumflex artery the lateral circumflex artery will all, all also supply the cortex of femoris next is the genicular artery the genicular artery will supply to the sartorius semimembranous muscle and the distal part of the cortex of femoris if we clearly look over here that the sartorius and the semimembranous are the muscles of the medial surface so we can clearly uh, say that the genicular artery will supply to the muscles of the medial aspect of the hind leg now the next is the caudal femoral now let me tell you that before reaching at this level okay the femoral artery will give out the caudal femoral artery okay now after giving the caudal femoral artery it will give saphenous artery as the last branch of the femoral and after that it will continue as the popliteal artery at the level of the popliteal lines okay now the saphenous artery talking about the saphenous artery it will it will obviously continuing on the posterior surface of the plant or the plantar surface so this is saphenous artery will continue to descend down now while descending down it will divide into the lateral and the medial plantar arteries these plantar artery will anastomose with each other through a perforating branch which is also known as the proximal plantar arch now this proximal plantar arch will communicate through the dorsal metacarpal artery okay this was about now sorry through a branch of the dorsal pedal artery not dorsal metacarpal artery it will communicate through the branch of the dorsal pedal artery now this was about now as it as it descends down and reaches below the fetlock it will also form a distal plantar arch will which will give a perforating branch to the dorsal metacarpal artery this will give and this will receive this proximal plantar arch will receive an perforating branch 
from the dorsal pedal artery while the distal plantar arch will give a perforating branch to the dorsal metacarpal artery. Now after that, that will continue as the digital arteries, okay, and same goes for here, it will continue as the dorsal common digital artery. So these are all about the supply to the abdomen and the hindwing.